I'm sure we can all agree that frizz is one of the most frustrating things when it comes to curly and wavy hair. We all experience it. While frizz is super common, there are some things you can do throughout your routine to help reduce it. So I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step wash day routine showing you exactly how you can reduce frizz without getting those hard, crunchy curls. So if you're somebody who wants to maintain that soft, more voluminous and full look like I have right here, then you'll definitely want to try this routine. I also wanted to thank Curlsmith for partnering with me here on my channel. They're one of my favorite partners and they just launched a new line. Yes, a brand new recipe and that is the frizz control line from Curlsmith. So this is a brand new line that is now available at Ulta stores. It comes with a shampoo, a conditioner that's actually multi-purpose, a curl retainer, which is a curl jelly, and a finishing serum. So some of these products they have never released before. Like I've never seen a serum from Curlsmith, so that's very exciting. All of these products are formulated to help reduce frizz with a tri oil blend and some other really nourishing ingredients that we will get into. So let's go ahead and get started with the routine and I will talk you through exactly how to use these and some other tips and tricks for reducing frizz. So I've already dry detangled my hair with a little bit of oil, which just helps protect my hair from damage and breakage. I like to get the tangles out before I shampoo so it's easier to wash and then I can get in at my scalp better and my hair doesn't end up like a matted mess when I'm shampooing. You can also detangle prior to shampooing using a conditioner when your hair is wet. I like doing that method as well. So the first step is to shampoo using the new Curlsmith Frizz Control Cleanser. If your hair is full of wet frizz or has a sticky, weighed down feeling to it, then it could be product buildup on the hair. I clarify on a regular basis, but I prefer to use a lathering shampoo on regular wash days like this one, and I'm still getting a really thorough cleanse. I even like to shampoo twice to make sure my scalp is completely free of residue, but this shampoo was very effective at getting my hair clean without stripping it. It was very gentle. It's not gonna strip your curls of moisture. It does contain a blend of oils such as jojoba seed oil, watermelon seed oil, and argan oil, which help to replenish the hair's lipid content. But just make sure you're thoroughly cleansing all the way to the ends of your hair, but really focusing on the scalp as well and then fully rinsing that out. Next, I'm using the Curlsmith Frizz Control Duo Conditioner. One of the biggest causes of frizz is dryness. So conditioner is essential, especially for naturally curly hair that is just prone to dryness because the oil cannot travel down our strands as easily as someone with straight hair. So conditioner helps to smooth and condition the cuticle after shampooing. Detangling will also prevent wet frizz and ensure every strand is evenly coated with that conditioner and everything is smoothed out. So I'm just gradually removing those tangles with my fingers, but being very gentle on the hair. I don't have a ton of tangles, thankfully, because I did dry detangle prior to this, but some can still develop during the shampoo process, and I'm also removing the loose hairs that I shed. So this conditioner contains the same blend of oils that are in this range that help to restore the hair's lipid content, which keeps the curls protected from frizz and moisturize. It's multi-purpose, so you can leave it in your hair if you want. I prefer to rinse it out so that I can ensure it's off my scalp. And then sometimes I just apply a little bit to my ends to make sure they have that extra layer of moisture because they tend to be a lot more high porosity and more damaged. Scrunching in your conditioner with some water can really help to increase absorption, especially if you're someone who has lower porosity hair and struggle with getting that conditioner to soak in. Then I was just showing you my after results because this conditioner definitely made a huge difference in the amount of frizz that I have. Then I'm just wrapping up my hair in my Curlsmith microfiber towel very loosely to soak up the excess water at my scalp. Before you apply your styling products, you'll want to ensure that your curls are evenly wet before you start styling. So I'm just misting my hair down with the Curlsmith spray bottle. This creates just an even mist all over and it doesn't soak and saturate the hair. I don't like for my hair to be dripping wet, but I also just like it to be evenly wet so that way I don't have any wet frizz. Then I'm just spritzing some of the Curlsmith Miracle Shield to protect my curls from heat when I diffuse later. This also has UV protectant in it. So I just combed that through to make sure it was evenly coated on my hair and then I sectioned my hair off and this just helps me better style my curls. I can get a lot more definition and it helps me when I'm doing brush styling as well. 
So I'm just creating a couple of sections and then I'm going to apply my styling product. So I'm actually gonna be layering two gels for maximum frizz protection. So I'm starting off with the new Curl Smith Curl Retainer. This is a jelly styler that is non-sticky and rich in moisture. Its consistency kind of reminds me of a cream gel because you have a little bit of that cloudy look to it. So it's not like your traditional clear thick gel. This is much more moisturizing feeling. It definitely feels more like a cream in your hair. It has a very soft feeling to it. So it contains the same tri oil blend as the rest of this line. And it also contains squalene and coconut butter. So very rich in moisture. So this combination of oils is supposed to create a light film on the hair and even helping to fight humidity. So that's how it's reducing frizz in this line is with that oil blend to help just smooth the cuticle and moisturize the hair. So I'm just doing some brush styling, which will reduce frizz by keeping the curls clumped together into curl families. This also prevents stringiness for me and helps the curls last a lot longer. Anytime I skip brush styling, I just never like my results. It ends up so stringy and always doesn't last as long. I get a ton of frizz. Since the curl retainer gives me a soft hold, I'm going to be adding in a light layer of the in shower style fixer, just mixed with some water to thin it out. This is one of Curl Smith's strongest hold gel. And since it's very thick, mixing it with water is just going to help you more easily apply it and also just dilute the hold a little bit. My curls are super prone to frizz and especially in humidity, they're very sensitive to humidity. So this extra layer will give me that crunch that I'm looking for. And it also contains some humidity blocking ingredients in it as well. So lack of hold is one of the most common causes of frizz. If your hair frizzes up after it's dried or by the end of the day, then that likely means that you didn't have enough hold in your stylers. You probably do need to add in a strong hold gel or just use a strong hold gel or even finish off with a hairspray if needed. And lack of hold can also be from diluting your gel too much with water in your hair. So this is why you usually see me style on more damp hair versus soaking wet. And I like just misting water as I go versus applying my stylers to soaking, dripping wet hair. That's just gonna dilute your stylers too much and lessen their hold. So to prevent frizz, we need stylers to provide a film or a cast on our hair. So there's two ways that stylers typically prevent frizz. One is by moisturizing and smoothing the cuticle with sealing oils, and that's what the frizz control line does. And the second is with natural styling agents such as aloe and flaxseed or with polymers like polyquaternium and copolymer. And the fixer gel actually contains polyquaternium 69, which provides a strong cast and humidity protection. So this routine combines moisture, cuticle sealing, and a hold for soft frizz protection. So I just wanted to share more about why I'm doing this brush coiling technique around this area. That's basically where you wrap the hair around the handle of the brush after you pull it through the bristles. And this really helps to keep any frizzy baby hair sort of tucked away into curl clumps. I get lots more defined ringlets. It also really helps with problem areas. So I don't do this all over my head. I mean, you could, but it's gonna take a while. And I like to do a fast brush styling technique. I just do this on problem areas, which for me is around my hairline and just around these baby hairs, you can see how they kind of come out of the curl clump. Sometimes I'll even finger coil those with some of the gel on my hands and that really helps just to smooth them out if you just do a little bit more precise styling around areas that get very frizzy for you. So brush styling is totally optional. You can totally skip it if you want to, but I just find that it does make a big difference in how long my curls last and it just keeps the frizz kind of tucked away. To speed up my dry time, I like to micro plop with my Curl Smith microfiber towel. I just use a wet section of it to prevent the towel from absorbing too much product that we already put in. And if any frizz develops, just smooth in a bit more gel mixed with water on top. And this is another great way to get even more hold. So if you're someone that really struggles with getting a gel cast, try scrunching out the water first and then going in with a light glaze of gel afterwards. And since you're applying that to more damp hair versus soaking wet, it's going to give you so much more of a cast that way. Now I'm ready to diffuse, which is also key for preventing frizz. So I'm using the new Curl Smith Travel Edition of the Diffrision Hair Dryer, but I actually attached the XXL diffuser head on this one because I like the larger size, but I like the compactness of the Travel Edition because it's actually foldable, so it easily fits under my bathroom cabinet. 
but I like to hover diffuse at first to set the gel cast and prevent frizz. And then I just scrunch or I pixie diffuse for more curl shrinkage. And that's just where you place the ends of your curls into the diffuser, press it up to your head, turn it on, hold it, and then let it go. And that's a great way to get a lot of curl shrinkage and definition without the air blowing your hair and causing frizz. Also air drying, especially in humidity, can lead to so much frizz. Diffusing just tends to give you more control over how your curls turn out because it sets the curl shape and the cast right away versus air drying where it's exposed to like more movement and wind and humidity and all of that. I also like to use the diffuser prongs to lift my roots and create a lot of volume. Once my hair is 100% dry, now we can scrunch out the crunch if you prefer a softer look and feel. However, leaving some of that gel cast in will prevent frizz on next day hair, especially if you're gonna be outside for a long period of time in humidity or wind, I recommend leaving the cast in. To finish, I'm using the new Curlsmith Frizz Rescue Finishing Serum, which is unlike your regular oils. It is an oil to gel consistency and a little goes a very long way. So I emulsify it in my palms to warm it up and then just glaze it over the surface of my curls and then scrunch. So this contains oils such as olive oil, argan oil, and squalane to soften and seal in moisture. It also contains glycerin and water, making it super hydrating for the curls. Then I'm just fluffing out my roots to create volume and root lift. Let me know what you think of these results, and I'm also going to show you my next day results in just a minute. So overall, I really like my results from this routine. I was surprised that I didn't get much of a gel cast at all, even after using that in-shower style fixer. I think because the frizz control products are so moisturizing and have those really softening oils that it did soften up the gel cast even on the fixer. Plus, I didn't really use that much of the fixer. I was applying it very sparingly because I didn't want to have super crunchy curls. Like I wanted to have this softer look because I know some of you guys prefer more fullness, you just get more volume and body within the inner layers of your hair that way. So I was trying to not use it too much of it, but I think next time that I do this routine, I will probably use a little bit more of the fixer and maybe less of the retainer for my hair type just to help it get a little bit more of a cast because my hair does better usually throughout the week if I do have a pretty strong cast. But this is just to give you all some options if you don't like a super hard cast in your curls. So I thought it would be fun to show you what my hair looks like on day two. It's super humid outside so this will be a really good test so we will see how well my curls hold up without having a cast but with having this oil blend that's supposed to help sort of waterproof the curls so let's get into the day two results so I wanted to give you a day two update on how my hair did going yesterday outside quite a bit in humidity and then also today it's been super humid it's been raining on and off all day now it's super sunny and so it's really humid outside and it's holding up pretty well. However, I do have quite a bit of frizz on some of my problem areas, which is mainly just this front section, especially like these pieces right here. These have been frizzing up for me almost every single wash day. I think I need to do like a little bit of a protein treatment or like a bond curl treatment on this top section. I think it just needs some repairing there, but looking at the underside layer of my hair, that's a lot healthier and not as high porosity. It looks great. Like the curls are shiny. My curl clumps are still intact. I protected my curls last night and everything. Haven't done any refreshing, haven't put any water on it, and these are my results. So I have quite a bit of frizz going on, but mainly just on the top section, as you can see up close. But overall, the curl clumps still look pretty good. Let me know what you guys think. Also, here's a look at how my hair looked when I did the same routine, but without the in-shower style fixer. This was at the end of day one, so I definitely had more frizz when I don't use the in-shower style fixer, so I definitely think I like them paired together. So let's finish off with a few follow-up steps to ensure your curls retain their shape and to reduce frizz. So protection post wash day is key and everything satin or silk is your best friend if you have curls. Sleep on a satin pillowcase and wear your hair up in a bonnet or a satin scrunchie. This will prevent breakage, tangles, and frizz. You can also wear a scarf if you want. So I hope you all enjoyed this routine. If you want to check out any of the products, I'm going to have everything listed down below. 
Fingers crossed Curl Smith comes out with a stronghold gel as part of this line. I think that would just be the perfect addition. Let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see that as well. And if you're still needing more help with frizz, I've done tons of frizz content here on my channel. I actually recently posted a video also featuring some other Curl Smith products and it was all about some mistakes that might be causing frizz in your curls in the summer and when traveling. So if you have any trips coming up or if you are going to be in humidity, then definitely check out that video. I will have it linked right here on the screen and I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.